Welcome my friends. So I've had lots of questions in the comments, DMs on Instagram and Facebook and lots of different places. And I'm seeing a lot of them are actually repetitive as well. Like lots of people ask the same question. So I thought I'm gonna make a video where I can actually give like feedback to your builds or your questions. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. So let's go. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out Hookies through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation set and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. If you want some input on your creative PC on the next creator PC feedback video, then feel free to leave questions in the description of this video. Sorry, no, that's not description. In the comments of this video, because I'll be using the comments section from this video in the next video if that makes sense also add a pc part picker if you want to just i'm thinking about using these parts what you think and also please explain how are you using the pc or how do you plan to use the pc because often people say which is better rtx 3060 or 3050 you're like well what for like what are you doing you know you might not see a difference at all but Explain your workflow so I can give a better feedback for your PC build. So this first question here now on the screen, you can pause this and actually see it on the screen a bit longer if you want to. But basically we're asking for a uh, PC for Lightroom and Photoshop and don't know like which motherboard and process to go for. Is it overkill? Not really bothered about the price, but just don't want to overspend it like on wrong things on Photoshop. I can see that this person is looking for RTX 3070 here, uh, but for Photoshop and Lightroom, that is a very much overkill a GPU. I'd very much recommend you to go with RTX 3050 because the difference between 3050 and 3070 is just marginable in Lightroom and Photoshop. So don't overspend your money on there for sure. You are thinking about Z690, but I think you should be even okay with a B660, but um, it's probably harder to find a Thunderbolt port on the B660 ports. Z690 bots have Thunderbolt ports, so if that is important with you, uh, Z690 is good. Um, 12900i7 or i9, it's actually 12700i7 or 12900i9. They're both quite good uh, CPUs, and uh, like the single core boost is very good. So I'd go with Z690 and 12900. And if you wanna save on like the processor cooling, then these processors longer turn TDP is 65 watts, so your performance per watt is quite good. I bought DDR5, 32 or 64 gigabytes or DDR4. Now DDR5 difference in Lightroom and Photoshop I have seen was up to 7% between DDR4 and DDR5 which is quite impressive actually but depending on the price you might not want to pay that much more for 7% increase rather you want to go with a higher capacity at least get 64 gigabytes for sure if you want to up it for 128 gigabytes depending on your workflow like how many photos and how many different layers and like how much you're exporting and stuff but photo editing loves to use a lot of RAM so having 64 at least like looks like your budget is quite there to have 64 gigabytes especially if you're saving on the GPU over there so next question this person has laid out the PC list very nicely over here and looks like they've been uh, Danut is been editing with a, on a gaming laptop uh, that they bought in 2017. Overall budget looks like is around 2,500 euros. It's looking for the best bank for buck, and I love these questions because best bank for buck is like you know the very nice theme that i love to do on this channel first question motherboards looking at your videos a 12th gen you need to pair with z690 you got the asus one and but is it compatible with my graphics card and ssd absolutely like if you get a z690 board you can put pretty much any ssd in there and well you can't really any ssd and any graphics card in there it's gonna work no problem over there but the asus tooth gaming z690 plus is like a good ddr4 motherboard i'm not sure about the current pricing of this exactly have a look at the gigabyte z690 aero g ddr4 version as well because that's got even more like better faster ports for a creator if you're a creator and you want to use some of like the fast ports i highly recommend you check that board out as well but this is a very good board there as well so secondly case and he says is not bothered about the case but knows that it comes with fans and what um 
fans would recommend for maximum cooling for the case. Now, people often overspend on fans and get RGB ones. And, you know, I'm doing this on my channel because, you know, RGB looks cool and, you know, sometimes it just fits in a color theme, but actually gives zero performance and it's very, very expensive. If you want some very affordable fans, check out Arctic fans. Arctic, anything really from Arctic is like the best bang for buck. It might not be like the best packaging and like the best setup process and sometimes feels like, oh, is this lower quality or something like that? But honestly, the performance is really not matched with Arctic. It's, it's very, very, very good. I highly recommend checking out the Arctic 120 millimeter fans. I've got a few over there. Check them out. Uh, I'll leave a link for this in the description because you're probably gonna get the best like performance for your money for that. And they're very, very cheap if you wanna get that. Corsair 4000D Airflow is like a good case. I've got that over there. We've done the $1,500 build for the great PC build and it was very, very good. So I think the case is fine, really. Just pick the one that you like. It doesn't really matter like which, uh, which case you have, but make sure that it's got good airflow, but this one really does. So third question over here is, I'm unsure how to choose my power source. Not sure if the wattage is correct. The thing I got from your videos is that platinum thing is for efficiency, but if you have other recommendations, I am happy to hear them. So I'm going to make a separate video about power supplies and how to choose them because there's quite a lot into it and a lot of confusing information on the web, especially if you're a creator, you're like, what? what's this 80 plus bronze, gold, titanium, platinum, what's going on over there? But I'm looking at your power source over here and this is definitely overkill for your build because you're not gonna use a thousand watts on your build. What I'd recommend you to do, if you're wanting to pick a power supply, and if you don't know what's the correct wattage for your build, then go to either PC part picker or a PC like power supply calculator. Just Google that. There's a few different websites available and you've gone with a Be Quiet one. Be Quiet has it on their website site as well. So you can just put in like your components. Oh, I'm using this graphics card, this CPU, this, that, that, that. And it gives you like a system maximum power draw. And then what I recommend you to do is like look at that maximum power draw and times it by 1.5. Just add like half of that on top because that gives you a little bit of upgrade path like in the future if you wanna up anything for that. Secondly, some of the components, even at maximum power draw, draw above that. They might be peaks of graphics cards and CPUs that peak a little bit higher than their maximum rated wattage and other components as well. So it's good to have a little bit above the maximum rated power supply because then you're never gonna like go into the issue that your power supply is just flicks off just because some of the components like just for millisecond peaked at very high like wattage or something like that. You have picked very high quality power supply and I think for this price range, I think this is an overkill. I'd probably go with 750 watt and that would be like way enough for all of your builds over there or looking at your graphics cards over there. In terms of the energy rating or power efficiency, you're not gonna see that big of a difference in this power draw range because your components aren't gonna draw as much power. So I calculated that like my 39, 50x which is a 16 core cpu and rtx 3070 if i went from like a uh, gold or bronze to titanium i'd probably save about seven um, quid per year in my country in in the uk but now the electricity prices are going up so the difference will be even bigger so it just depends how important the efficiency rating is for you having a platinum like that that's absolutely amazing and if you go with a 1000 watts this is really gonna just you know run you through a lot of different builds i'm not sure if you even have to change it in the next 10 years because the actual warranty for this will be about 12 or 10 years over 10 years as well if you want a good power supply just make sure that the warranty is at least 10 years that's a good power supply in terms of your build over here looks like it's pretty good uh, like everything has pretty well balanced and done out. I think what you can or where you can save a little bit is the SSD on the Samsung 980 Pro. That Them Samsung drives like are a little bit more expensive than some of the comparisons ones. So I would probably look into some of the team group Z440 or C440 drives. You're probably gonna get it a little bit cheaper. So just go check them out. So this Jared here is asking, what is the best processor and graphics card money can buy for Adobe Premiere Pro? Would it be RTX 3090 or would it be better to go with the 
uh, A6000. The best processor is the 24 core Threadripper? Question mark. Okay, so if someone wants just the best processor for Premiere Pro, it depends what are they doing. For example, some of the effects and some of the workflows that you're using, if it's mirrorless camera footage, then like Intel i9 is better than Threadripper Pro, you know, even 64 core, that's like 6000 dollars or something like that just because of the igpu and the hardware acceleration for those codecs but let's say if you just want the best for the best is like a threadripper pro now the 5000 series threadripper pro 5000 series 64 core that will be like the best um, that you can get in terms of the graphics cards the best would be an A6000. It, it will be slightly better because it will have more VRAM. It's got a few more CUDA cores, uh, but those cards usually are a lot more expensive than the RTX 1390 as well. Even the RTX 1390 at scalper prices is half the price of the RTX A6000. Looking to build a PC for multimedia, Adobe programs, 3D, and which GPU to buy? 3060 or 3070? Is it worth spending more over there? and whether to go with AMD or Intel when it comes to um, design and gaming. So basically, depends what's your budget, and it's it's hard to say over here, but 3070 is quite a bit better than the 3060. There's a 3060 Ti in the middle as well, and the 3070 depend what, what you do. Photo editing, not that big of a difference, but video editing, very big difference between those two. So if that is important for you, definitely go for that. Also 3D design, that means that means like CUDA rendering, RTX rendering, or you know, performance much better on the 3070. So I would go with that one. I think at the moment, if you are just looking for rendering in a lot of things, uh, then AMD like 5900X would be better. But if you're just looking for like the best, then I think um, Intel is like the best at the moment. Not sure what you're doing over there. If you want to save a little bit on the motherboards, then AMD is that, but Intel motherboards are more specful. So like Intel platform is a little bit more future-proof as well, because most likely the next generation of CPUs will be on the same platform if you're thinking about upgrade. AMD at the moment, this is the last thing. There's only one processor that's coming out. Not sure when you're watching this video, the 5800X 3D. Uh, but this is really for gamers. I don't think a lot of content creators will be getting this, but would be interesting to check it out. I hope I'm going to get it in so I can show you this, but that's what I would do. So my work rule will be mainly video editing, 4K, multiplayer, color grade, and other stuff in Premiere Pro. Then After, Ex After Effects, Photoshop, specs would be 12600K, RTX 3050, 32 gigabytes of RAM, decent budget M B660 motherboard. Is it going to be smooth? Depends what codecs are you using and how many multi layers of stuff will you have. If you do a lot of color grade and stuff, the 3050 doesn't have a lot of graphics power. So going with 3060 can be a little bit better or 3070 in there, but looks like you've got pretty good system over there. 12600K is like, I think the sweet spot of a, of a CPU that you can get. In my 12600K timeline preview, I showed the color graded footage playback. It was smooth, but would it be the same if multi-layer color grade effect would be in all 4K resolution with 3050? No, it wouldn't be the same because 3050 it does not have the same graphics power as 3090 because I think I tested it with 30 and 90 on the 12600K. The more effects you're gonna have, especially color grade, that all goes on the GPU in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. So no, it wouldn't be the same. So Alif is asking for a PC build advice. He was gonna use it for 4K 60 frames per second, H.264 video editing, primary purpose, then some photo editing, and then some audio editing. Planning, planning to go with 12400 plus RTX 3060 combo. Will be probably cheap out on the motherboard, planning to go with Asus Prime H610M D4 motherboard, two times 3200 megahertz sticks at 16 gigabytes each, two SSDs NVMe Gen 3, and a 80 plus bronze rated 60, 650 watt PSU. Is this a good match? I'm kind of worried about the motherboard thermals, but it had side VM, blah, blah, blah. If I go with 3050, I could up my processor for something like uh, 12700, but still worried about thermals on the motherboard. And my 3050 review is coming out soon, probably out by the time you're watching this. But the thing is, the 12400 and this motherboard, especially H610, 
you're not going to be able to use XMP settings. So most likely your 3200 megahertz RAM is not going to run at that. So H610 is not a good idea for going with, with that motherboard. I'd probably go with Asus Prime. Well, if that is your budget, check out my $1,000 uh, create a PC build because then I'm going to have the 12400 plus RTX 3050 over there uh, and depending if you can go just above that maybe you can go with 12600k or 12700 not sure you know which one you can go for there but that's going to be like a big bump in your performance and RTX 3050 will be quite all right anything else really fine over here but that motherboard is a big no-no for me Tilly Babu P is saying um, how would you uh, build the perfect computer, RAM and motherboard for a uh, game development on Unreal Engine 5 and heavy gaming 24-7 as best cooler for it. So what's the best, you know, PC you can have for Unreal 5, Un Unreal Engine 5? Then I'd highly recommend you check out this uh, Bujabench, um article on this where you can really like deep into like which one you should go for and which is the best. But there's like two separate kind of areas as well it is there's like code shader compile or artist focus for the game development so depends which one you want to go for um, i'll leave the links in the description below but it's hard to kind of know but basically you'd kind of get your budget and then equal out the cpu and gpu and then there you would kind of get the uh, best answer someone's asking 12 uh, 400f with 3050 16 gigs of ram premiere pro photoshop after effects and resolve plus gaming no please don't go with the f variant come on how many times can I tell you this, uh, people? Uh, don't go with the F variant. Get the iGPU in there as well. It's going to be a massive difference for video editing. Best bang for work GPU for creators in Premiere Pro. Don't know which one to get. RTX 3050 has the best performance per dollar. So if you're looking for that, that's RTX 3050. Anything above that is really going to have massive higher price but not as much performance how do you turn on the gpu on the process i just got the 12600k on the machine i actually answered that question there as well but i'm gonna leave a video link up there so you can check it out how to turn on the igpo in bios so this is ddr5 issues now and uh, are they solved yet what's the ddr you know what's going on windows 11 and so on so Windows 11 is completely fine now uh, as far as I'm running like lots of different testbed setups and like PCs on Windows 11. So no problem over there. You don't need to worry about Windows 11. I think Windows 11 is, is solid now. But DDR5, there's still a few issues over there. Obviously the supply, but the, the four stick XMP, especially if you go in with higher end XMPs like over 5200 megahertz you're going to start to struggle to have xmp on four sticks enabled so a few issues still there that i haven't seen sorted and um, like this one behind there this is the z690 uh like intel 12th gen test setup and there's four sticks of xmp in there or sticks in there ddr5 and i can only run them at 4800 megahertz most of the time 5200 megahertz does not work so yes there is still ddr5 issues so environmentally friendly is saying at the moment i don't want to build a pc can you provide any recommendation for a new pc my budget is five thousand dollars if you have laptop recommendations i take them too my workflow consists of 4k video editing uh, visual effects music production and some animation smooth timeline performance that would be great depends which ecosystem you want to go for apple or also windows because that project you can probably get both um, and there's benefits and like you know drawbacks for both depends if you want something just plug in works wow it just works probably check out apple and check out my uh, mac studio you know kind of overview or stay tuned if you want to see this in the studio as well how this will work but there's no reviews out there about that yet so you i can't really recommend that yet but it looks very very promising if you want to go with apple that's kind of like plug in play that's it no upgrade paths no nothing so but if you want a pc more like really fine-tuned for your workflow and you can you know repair it if something goes wrong and configure it and so on then i highly recommend you check out puget systems if you're in the us pugetsystems.com check them out they're very focused and you know creative pcs you get warranty with them very high end very quality stuff for five grand you're going to get an absolutely a killer killer machine uh, for video editing all of that stuff if you want a laptop for that i think if you're a creator just laptops at the moment and um, check out asus uh, pro art studio book 16 the one with the dial that will be interesting you know in terms of that but it's the much lower budget range 
If you look a little bit higher one, the uh, Apple MacBook Pros with the M1 Max chips will probably be uh, good for you. That's what I would do. So that's enough of questions for this episode. If you have any others, let me know in the comment section below. Drop them over there. Leave me a spec list for your PC. Tell me what you're going to use them for. And then, you know, I can give you some feedback and then help you out. Or if you have any other questions, just leave them down there for the next video. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.